The 500 pounds used challenge. What kind of camera and lens setup can you get with that kind of budget? And how much change are you gonna have left over? Let's take a look. It's Throwback Thursday. Welcome to Throwback Thursday, where every week we take a look at the older stuff, the different stuff, and the interesting stuff in our used department here at Park Cameras. Now, we've got a pretty big used department. People trade and stuff in all the time. We get loads of interesting stuff coming in. We thought it'd be a cool idea to start checking out what you can do with some of the different stuff that comes into our used department. So where better to start than at the beginning? So we thought we'd set a little challenge for ourselves. 500 pound budget, what camera and lens setup can you get with that kind of budget or less? and how much change you're gonna have left over. So we actually asked a bunch of our staff members to kind of go through our used department and, and pick out some setups for a maximum of 500 pound budget. We want to see what people will go for. Turns out, this is a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. There's actually loads of interesting setups you can go for, and there's quite a lot of different choice for different types of photography. So we've gone ahead and picked out two kind of great starter kits if you're looking to get into photography for less than 500 pounds from our used department. Now things change all the time in the used department, as you can imagine, things come in, things come out all the time. So no guarantee these kind of setups are always gonna be there, but they're, they're a pretty sort of standard, decent, good value setup. So there's always gonna be something similar. So the first setup is a Canon setup. We've got the Canon 5D for the body, which is coming in at 259 pounds. And then we've got the Canon 50mm F1.8 STM lens which is coming in at 79 pounds. So that gives you a grand total of 338 pounds. So quite a lot of change left over. Here's the setup. Now I think this is a really interesting setup because you've got a full frame camera here. It's 12.8 megapixels. So it's not a huge resolution, but you're still gonna be able to get really nice pictures. It's still a full frame sensor. And paired with that 50 mil f1.8 lens, it's gonna be letting in quite a lot of light. So you're not gonna have any issues with kind of lower light situations. You're not going to have to bump up that ISO too much at all. It's also going to allow you to get a nice bit of bokeh in your shots. So for anyone who's kind of starting out with photography, that's always one of the more exciting places to start is kind of the bokeh, getting those out of focus elements that always just make shots look really nice immediately. And if you start out photography and this is kind of a kit that you're going for, you're going to be really happy with that. It's a DSLR camera with a relatively small lens, so you've got a nice chunky feel. It's actually very comfortable to hold. It's got a nice deep grip, nice big controls. Canon's always a favourite with people because of how it controls. You've just got nice easy to use menus, easy to use controls, and, and even on the 5D, which is a much older model, that's still the case. That's still the case. It's, it's just easy to use. Now, you've got quite a lot of change there. You've got, what, £162 change for this setup? That's gonna give you a lot of options for what you wanna do. Now, you could go for stuff like a bag, some cards, maybe a strap, maybe some accessories, or maybe you get yourself a, a nice pair of trainers that you've been looking at. Yeah, maybe, maybe you take someone out to dinner for a treat. Yeah, or maybe you do something like that. It doesn't have to be camera stuff. There is a lot of room there for getting kind of accessories and stuff like that, but you can also do whatever you want. Yeah, it's your money. It's your money. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. That's your money. So the second setup we've got here is a Fujifilm setup. So we've got the Fujifilm X-T10 for the camera body. That's coming in at £199, and that's a really nice mirrorless camera. It's quite small and light. You've got 16 megapixel resolution there as well. And then paired with that, we've got the Fujifilm XC 15 to 45 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 lens. So it's a nice zoom lens coming in at £169. Now that gives you a grand total of 368 pounds. So a little bit more expensive than the Canon setup, but you still got a lot of change there to play with. Now this one's a much smaller system than the Canon one. It's a smaller camera, it's a mirrorless camera rather than DSLR. So it's going to be a much smaller system. You've also got a nice zoom lens on there rather than a prime. Now that has advantages and disadvantages. Obviously it's a 15 to 45 zoom. So you've got a little bit of versatility there for how you want to shoot. It is an APS-C camera, which means the sensor is a little bit smaller. But that does give you a little bit extra reach in that zoom range. So it's about 1.5 times crop factor. It's a 15 to 45 lens, but on this sensor, that's going to be roughly 22 and a half millimeter to about 67 and a half millimeters. So you're getting a nice bit of range there with the lens. It's not as fast, so you don't have as, as large a maximum aperture. So it's not going to be letting as much light in as on the Canon system. 
But the trade-off there is you have got the zoom, whereas on the Canon system, it is just a prime. It's also a much newer camera. It came out in 2015. And it's an interesting camera. You've got a 16 megapixel resolution, so you get nice looking images. It still feels comfortable to shoot, although admittedly it doesn't have as deep a grip as on the Canon, but it still feels comfortable. It is nice and light and small. So if you want something that's easy to take out and about, that's easy to pop in a bag without worrying too much about it, this is a great little system. Also with that zoom range, you're probably not going to be kind of super in need of another lens as fast as you might do on the Canon. Fujifilm cameras also have a nice aesthetic to them with all their little dials and things on the top. So you've got a dial for shutter speed and exposure compensation and things like that. I think they look nice. I'm also very impressed with the viewfinder in this one. So where the Canon has an optical viewfinder, which always looks really nice, I always think optical viewfinders look really nice because you are just seeing straight through the lens, essentially, just with the mirror. Whereas this has got an electronic viewfinder. So that has some advantages and disadvantages. I actually think this one looks really nice. I was surprised, actually. I was, I was kind of expecting, you know, older camera. I was kind of expecting it to not look so great, but actually, this viewfinder is really quite nice. And the advantage of them is you get essentially a, a live view of your exposure and stuff like that. So you're actually seeing what the sensor is seeing. So looking through the viewfinder, you're actually gonna get uh, a view of what your exposure is like and you can adjust the settings based on that. Now this setup still gives you 132 pounds change if you set your budget at 500 pounds, which is quite a lot. So there's lots you can do with that. You can, again, you can look at bags, straps, all kinds of accessories, even maybe a different lens as well to go with this. Or you can go for something else, something non-photographic, you know? Like I said before, go out to dinner, take someone out to dinner, buy yourself a new pair of shoes, you go to the cinema, you know, all kinds of stuff. I'm not gonna tell you how you have to spend your change, but uh, I'm just saying, that's quite a lot of change. Now we're gonna take both these setups out for a spin. We're gonna go take them out, do some photos, various things, test out the lenses, maybe get some bokeh with this one, and try out the different zoom ranges on this one, and just see kind of how they handle. So, let's go have a look. So we've come down to this park where we can take all kinds of different pictures, a bit of landscape, a bit of portrait, especially with the 50mm f1.8, get some of that bokeh, some of those out of focus shots. I've got my lovely model with me which is really handy so I can get some nice out of focus shots in the background. But both cameras seem to be performing really quite well. So far, just looking at the back of the screen, the dynamic range, stuff like that, actually it's better than I thought it was going to be, especially in the 5D which is, you know, it's an older camera. I didn't think it'd be as good, but actually it's not bad at all. Now it's a full frame sensor, so actually the image quality does seem to be really nice. I'm very excited to get back and see what they look like on the computer. And same with the Fujifilm, it's, it's, you know, it's a nice camera to shoot with. It's nice and small, lightweight, you could easily take this around with you, traveling out and about. But you've got the flip out screen, it's got things like face detect as well, when it comes to autofocus, which is really nice for portraits. Just a nice camera to shoot with, you know, that zoom range also just, it just, it's just nice to have, whereas obviously this is a prime, so I've been having to move myself around. This has got the zoom range. They're, they're just nice, they're, they're very different kinds of cameras, you know, big and, and slightly more bulky with a nice prime, whereas this is small kind of travel camera with the zoom range. So, yeah, really impressed. Actually, actually more impressed than I thought I would be uh, using these. I thought they might be a little bit archaic, but that's not been the case at all. It's been really interesting shooting with both these setups. Uh, I think they're both really decent setups. I've been really liking shooting with both, actually. They're a little bit different. The Canon's obviously a, a bigger, bulkier feel. I actually find it super comfortable because, because I've got big hands. It's nice having a big grip. I like the 50mm f1.8 as well. I like getting the bokeh in the shots. I like getting the, getting the kind of out of focus areas. And then with the Fujifilm, I really like the opposite stuff, actually. I like how small it is. This would make a great travel system, you know, so it would make a great camera for anyone starting out. You've got the zoom range to play with, kind of different things like that. Again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I was surprised when I was out shooting with it again, I was surprised by how good the viewfinder was. I just didn't expect an EVF to be as nice as that. Uh, on, on an older camera like this, but also the screen works really well. It's just it's just a nice setup to be shooting with. I like the dials. I like Fujifilm cameras. They're just nice to shoot with. To be honest, both these cameras are nice. They are different. They're different kind of setups. But for this kind of money, I could easily see myself. Uh, if I if I know someone who's getting into photography, this is this is the kind of stuff I'm going to be recommending. Now, if you have any questions about either setup, anything you saw in the video, anything at all, really. Pop it down in the comments, but I would love to hear from you. I love to hear if anyone wants to spend five minutes and have a go at the old use challenge, what you would go for with a 500 pound budget. I'll pop a link in the description where you can find all the used cameras and lenses. I'd love to hear what your setups would be down in the comments. Remember 500 pound budget, but of course you can go below that. And maybe tell me what you spend your change on as well. You know, I'd love to, I'd love to hear 
what you'd spend your change on because it's uh it's interesting. It doesn't have to be photography related. Just let me know. Let me know down there. And of course, if you'd like to see anything else in future videos, pop it down there as well. Now, if you like the video, maybe consider giving it a thumbs up. Yeah, you know? I appreciate that very much. I appreciate that. We're trying something a little bit different with this video, so that would be great. Give us a little subscribe as well if you're new here, because we've got loads of stuff. Tutorials every Tuesday. We've got these on Thursdays. We've got reviews. We've got all kinds of different stuff. So uh, make sure to subscribe for all of that. I'll see you in the next video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching. It's making a lot of noise. My watch is making a lot of noise. That's not what you want. <laughs> oh. I hope uh, some of you guys like my, I don't know, way of messing around in these videos <laughs> because I like it and uh, I hope it's not just me, you know? <laughs> you know what? I'll do this in a minute when I'm not when I'm not filming. <laughs> not that I'm wasting film, but you know what I mean. Or perhaps, uh, perhaps splurge on some new speakers. I don't know why I'm like this. It makes editing videos much harder because I've got all this footage of me just saying nonsense, you know? But would I do it any different? No, I don't think so.